I saw on the court when you were asked uh, how you know when something like this is coming, you said, oh, when I wake up. But I mean, half facetiously, but can you tell in pregame warmups, okay, my shot is on or my shot's a little off, or do you have to wait till the live, live action starts? Yeah, I only said that because uh, uh, JC said that earlier this year. We had his career high in OKC. Someone asked him the same question, so I was giving, giving a, a paying homage to him. But you really don't know. I really don't know. I, could, I had games where I shot incredible in warm-ups and had the worst shooting night that, that night. Um, mainly if my mind's in the right place, um, coming into the game, um, as far as following the game plan, I felt like that's when I'll have solid games. So just trying to stay locked in on what we're doing on the defensive side of the ball and try to stay locked in on where coach want me to uh, play out on the offense and the game just flowing naturally for me. Kevin, I'm going to try to ask this in a way that doesn't make me sound like Nick, but what, what do you make of Bo Bowl and all he's able to do for a guy that's 7-2? Uh, yeah, he's, he's unique. He's, uh, he, he's tough to deal with. Um, and you see his confidence growing by the game. You know, he can pretty much do everything on a basketball court. So just need more reps. The last few years, he's been in and out the lineup, uh, you know, hurt, uh, G League stints. Um, but I love what Jamal doing with him over there, putting him at the point sometimes, playing him at the five, just moving him around because he's such a versatile player. Um, it's great for the league. I think I think you'll start to see um, him continue to, you know, be more and more of an impact player as time goes on. So um, he's playing well this year. And so Kevin, is he a one of one? <laughs> <laughs> We're all one of ones, baby. <laughs> You're a one of one, Nick. Uh, as for I. I don't know if you saw the clip yet, but there's that clip at the end of the third. It looked like Harris said something to you, and you had the ball like this and just started laughing, and then you scored. Uh, Did he say something? Oh, no, it was the first half, I think. I think that's the first. First half? I just seen that clip, too. Um, yeah, he was just extra physical, using his hands. Like, you know, it was legal, but it was just a lot, you know, and I was just, I was wondering if the ref was going to call something, and he didn't. He let us play on, and I just thought it was funny uh, how physical he was. Uh, but, yeah, it's, we're all just having a good time playing the game. And what changes the most? And you guys have dealt with it now for a few weeks when Ben's dealing with this knee injury. What changes the most now when he's not on the floor? Uh, we just we got to play smaller. I mean, we, you know, he's one of our bigs out there, so... Uh, I thought Coach did a good job of trying to figure out the small lineup on the fly. Uh, we got to play a little faster. And, uh, you know, I think we all just got to do a good job of gang rebounding and doing the little stuff when he's not out there. So, uh, you know, we had some practice in with him not being in the lineup. And, you know, we was able to figure some stuff out. Um, so, you know, something like, you know, drastic as this, coming leaving in the first quarter, we, we uh, was able to make an adjustment. Um, Kevin, you mentioned out on the court that uh, it was a goal to get back to 500. I mean, was that a motivating, actually a motivating factor for you? And do you feel like you guys have really been through a lot? I mean, you got close a couple times to 500. Yeah, yeah that's really what it was. We got so close, and we ended up falling two games out of the, uh, under 500. So I just wanted to, just a little milestone we wanted to achieve in the early season and definitely was motivated to come out here and on our home floor and get back to 500. I think it was it's every game we play at home is so important because we want to keep our fans engaged and keep them supporting us through just having good product out on the court, which is playing hard, playing together. Uh, we going, you know, we want guys to feel comfortable in our home arena when they when they take shots. So it's a lot on the line when we play at home, and you know, we want to take advantage of those opportunities. Katie, you had uh, multiple and one this game, and you only missed five shots. How do you feel about the defense they give you, like, or it just uh, it has nothing to do with defense, just you being you? Oh, uh, they're long and athletic, and um, I felt like I had to use a lot of my legs and my follow through on a lot of shots tonight because uh, my fundamentals had to be on point with this team because they they can disrupt you on any you know action that you that I try to try to do. From they got a lot of hands on the ball when they trap me, and I try to throw over the top a lot of, against other teams that's a that's a you know, pass gets through but that long athletic team over there is tough to to get free looks so I just try to be fundamentally sound and get to my spots and knock them in you've had a couple big scoring nights already this year but I mean your two biggest ones you guys actually lost in your mind was this what was different I guess this time was it 
Joe breaking out and having a big night? Was it a couple timely stops? In your mind, what was the difference this time around? Um, <clears throat> we all rebounded them. They didn't kill us on the boards. And we, it was a possession battle we won that. Uh, we, had, we won that. Um, so usually when that happens, we're in good shape. You know, in those other games where we down early, we they took 20 more shots than us. We turned the ball over as well, you know. And I'm trying to help the team get, you know, at least make it a game. So, um, you know, I put my foot on the gas to try to score, you know. So tonight was just happening in the flow of the game. Organically, we was able to get a lead and push, you know, get up 11. And they came back. So it was just it was one of them back and forth games. I was able to get my, my feet under me. Yeah, Kevin, uh, on the subject of big scoring nights, obviously a few this season now, how aware are you of the MVP chance to go up around the arena? Is that something you'd like to be in consideration for again, eight or nine years after the last one? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I've been there, done that, to be honest. And I know uh, it's going to take a lot for me to, to, to be in that conversation. So I, I, I just want the respect from our fan base, and I want them to have a good time when they come to the game. So if that's... And you know, that's what strikes, you know, chance up is how I play from the fans as long as they're having a good time. So, yeah, you know, but I'm not too worried about accolades at this point in my career. Last one, yeah, Kevin, you talked, you touched earlier just on, you know, playing, letting the game come to you, playing within the rhythm. Just when you have it stuck on automatic like you did today, is that more difficult not to try to, you know, get outside the offense, go get the ball yourself, or is that easy for you just to keep playing within the flow? I'll just keep playing within the flow because, I mean, the, respectfully, I feel like I'm always on. You know, I feel like I always, even if I'm not making shots that night, I feel like my jump shot is is always sharp. So, um, you know, I don't want to get in the way of the game too much by just putting my head down and scoring because teams can make adjustments. They might start doubling me now. So I just got to see how the game is being played, see how the defense is being played, what my teammates are doing as well. So, you know, it's a lot I'm thinking about out there, but it's a fun, it's a fun mental game that I play. Thanks, Kevin.